The newcomer to a tea group is often surprised by the length of time the group spends in almost total silence. Big problem with these long silences. Yes, yes. There's the whole business about you know whether you're going to fit the stereotypes and be the person who breaks it. Or the silence is rather interesting. People can get a lot from the silence. Some people can just experience their own feelings and thoughts during it. Other people feel extremely frustrated by the silence and feel they have to structure. So different people get different things out of the silences. If this particular group of people was meeting in um, other circumstances, I can well imagine that it would be difficult to get a word in edgeways. <laughs> I mean, there's probably every person here is someone who, in other social contexts, more than holds their own, I would guess. Um, I can't imagine any other situation where um, I sit with a group of articulate people experiencing lengthy silences. I, I actually, I like the silence. I, I, mm. I, I, I hear what you say, because I, I talk non-stop, more or less, without uh, hesitation. But I like the silences in, in groups. I was enjoying the silences in this group. It's one of the special things that I find with the people here. I can actually be quite quiet and experiment with, with shutting up. If I want uh, silence, I go off on my own somewhere. Right, it's a different kind of silence, though. I'm not a particularly talkative person, and yet I feel I hold my own in social situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't associate talking particularly with holding your own. The role of a tea group leader is an unconventional one. The trainer or facilitator of this group is Nod Miller, but she makes no attempt to structure the discussion or dominate the group. What I try to do is to create a vacuum which the people in the group then fill with their own agenda. Um, one way of, of seeing the, the role of a tea group trainer um, is in terms of breaking the rules or acting in a way which people don't expect leaders to act in uh, in order to give people perhaps a, a new perspective on behaviour that normally they, they take for granted. And so what ends up happening frequently is that one or more people attack the group leader to try to get that person into the traditional role and to provide the kind of structure that they're not experiencing at the moment. I think we've come to a point where we've got to decide whether to move this group on or whether we stay at talking about the kinds of things groups always talk about. I think that's made me even more anxious now you said that because um, mm. I suppose I feel some, you know, it's like being Pied Piper or something, feeling some responsibility mm. for leading somewhere and... Uh, mm. Yes, I'm not quite knowing where. Mm.